Time's yours. Uh, I'm not sure there was a defining moment involved in that. I know uh, his uh, rookie year, we had a preseason game against Cincinnati, and he, he took a, a, a short dump off and outran four secondary guys. And at that point, I was like, well, this kid's got something to him. So, um, But I think he, he continues to surprise us with doing different things and seeing different things and being able to uh, – uh, go out and perform in in, in different areas that, that I, he's still not his best self yet. He's still got room that he can get better at, and uh, that's always what we strive to do is, okay, you know, you're doing this well, so let, let's improve in this category, and he keeps pushing that. Can you be specific about what you're talking about? Nope. <laughs> Uh, well, he was flying pretty high last year when he got hurt. You know, he made six games and got hurt against uh, Washington. Um, and then he attacked his uh, rehab. So for him to come back, uh, he was ready to go and wanting to get going during OTAs, and we held him back because uh, Rick wanted to wait until, you know, training camp to fully let him go. And uh, it's been great watching him, uh, you know, progress. Again, he's... Uh, gets better at the, the things that we set each week uh, as far as what he needs to attack and, and and focus on. And then the other areas, he's just a phenomenal athlete. And you see that part of his game and the more experience he gets. And it's great having uh, the guys in the room. You know, Travis obviously sees the game really well. And, and Blake Bell has been in the league for a while. So he's got people to hear and, and give a perspective on what he's done in practice and in games. and. Uh, he can, you know, kind of take that in and, and use that as he goes forward. Travis takes up such a big part of the tight end offense because he's so great. Uh, what have you seen from Noah Gray as he's developed through this first couple of years? Is he about where you thought he'd be in this situation? Um, I mean, you'd like to say yes, but I, I think he's he's progressing kind of where you would say a second year tight end would be. The things that he did last year were a little more mechanical. Uh, he can handle different layers to making decisions and physically he's able to go with them now where a year ago it was just a tick off because he didn't recognize it and see it as quickly. And uh, Again, same thing with, with Travis in the room there that he can give him feedback on how he, he looks at something and how he should pre-snap and post-snap look at it. Uh, so it's a good discussion in the room with everybody. They have varying degrees of experience and ability, and some guys can do uh, what the others can, can't, and you kind of have to build off of that to not ask somebody to do what the other guy did and, and you know, not what you do well. Generally speaking, uh, you know, it's a week-to-week -week league, and last year you guys played the Titans. It was about a year ago. A lot of different players on both teams. That was probably one of the poor offensive games you guys have had in the regular season against anyone. Patrick, uh, you know, mentioned yesterday, it sounds like it's maybe still sticking with him. He likes to file things away and keep it up. Do you, you, you guys take anything from last year's game? Do you remember things? you just let it all go um, as far as, like, what they did to stop you guys? Well, obviously, you're, you're going to – you, well, you're going to, you know, uh, you know, scrutinize what went on during the game, the good, the bad, and, and what we expected, didn't expect, and – uh, you know, do that as your off off season study. Uh, you know, it, it was kind of like w with the Bills. It's you know, it, it, it's a new year, a new team. They won last year, so you know, again, you, as a competitor, that always fits in, but it can't drive you. Uh, we have a whole new team, and uh, the dynamics are different, so that can't be. You can't talk in there. Hey, this is what they did last year, where half the guys weren't here, so. Uh, it can't be the driving factor. The guys that were, you know, obviously Patrick goes with it and Travis has some, you know, thoughts on that one. But uh, you kind of have to use the good, evaluate the bad, and, and, and have a, a positive, hopefully a positive uh, performance going forward. Well, uh, Travis is kind of in an age where a lot of guys 
skills, maybe start using those skills that he obviously has. And what, what, what do you put your finger on there? Is it just luck, or is there more to it than that? There's a couple of things. There is luck because, you know, injury is always uh, a huge part of this game. So he's been fortunate that the injuries he's had, he's one, played through, um, and two, he's been able to, the ones he's had to have surgery, uh, be able to come back from it. So it's kind of a, a little bit of both. He, he's, he has a, a, the highest pain tolerance uh, and one of the toughest kids that I've ever coached uh, in football. So the, those things kind of help with him too um, as far as being able to perform probably with some of the, you know, the, the bruises and nicks and cuts that you get in, in the normal course of a year. But he has been fortunate in that regard that it hasn't been season any type. So let's hope I'll come find you if it's yeah. something. Yeah. Are there other things beyond that? that you can put your on? Well, I, I, you know, he's, you check the boxes with him as far as, you know, how, how athletic he is, uh, how smart he is, how well he takes care of his body, um, his outlook, his, his team perspective. Uh, you know, he, he's uh, just as a competitor. So he's got all those things going for him. And I think it's just a conglomeration of everything kind of building to where. Uh, and he's able to play with, you know, Patrick obviously comes in. Uh, had a great quarterback to start with, with, with uh, Alex that was tremendous with everybody, but uh, with him specifically as to what I expect from you, where you need to be. and. Um, so he, he's been fortunate in that regard. Last two. Nate Tom, for understandable reasons, we often ask you how you can help a player. I just wonder with the unique situation you guys have with four tight ends back another season, how much does that help you as a coach? To have all four back mm -hmm. the same time? Well, you take everybody where they're at and just try and make them better from where their bar is at this point. So it, it's, I'd rather have somebody come back and move them on as opposed to starting at zero with a new player. Uh, but that's, that's just the game. I'm, for, I'm fortunate that we have the four back uh, that we had last year and keep them moving forward because you can continue, you can get them better of the things that they need to for this offense. We have a better feel for them. They have a feel for what we're doing so we can go further. Uh, but just part of the, the process is you're going to have new kids. That's the way it happens, and you, you get somebody wherever they're at and build them up. But fortunately, I have the four to where now they're all ratcheting uh, a step higher than they were a year ago, and that, that's always better if they're the four you had as opposed to now starting back down with a new kid. So. Coach, along those same lines, the 12 personnel package has always been a staple of a West Coast offense and even the Chiefs offense. You, you run the more 13 this year. What, what specific traits are you looking for with those kinds of tight ends for a 13 personnel package? Um, well, I don't think you, I mean, it's not specific to having three tight ends out there as opposed to two or one. It's just who are the best, who are the matchup th this week, how do they affect, you know, a defense may handle it like it's just three wide receivers and one tight end and, and not make any adjustments that way. What are our advantages to that and what uh, are the disadvantages to how they match us up? And that would probably let you know sometimes we'll have th more three tight end sets against a team and sometimes we wouldn't because the matchup doesn't uh, pan out or the, our perceived matchup on that one. So that that's the, the whole cat and mouse game there. It's, we have the three out there, what are they going to do? We have one out there. What are they going to do? What's the advantage to us? And then you look at the other guys. How I many you get two backs out there? And so that that's the discussion. You start from the beginning and just keep building on it as in your evaluation and find out what what we like and how it works against what they do. So. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom.